G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we start a new 18 team series. You know I love doing them by now. Uh, today we are going to start with the Western Bulldogs and then move through this series all the way through to the Adelaide Crows. This series, the premise of it will be uh, around each team's New Year's resolutions for 2024, which is kind of a fancy way of saying things that uh, I think they want to achieve in 2024. What I've done is gone through, I've picked about eight things here for the Western Bulldogs that uh, on a micro level, if they can tick those off, it may lead to a greater season overall. So like I said, doing the doggies today, you'll also get my Eagles version of this today. If you are a Dogs fan watching this, I have done two previous playlists, if you're unaware, uh, where I analyze each team in the AFL's uh, best 22 for 2024. And then in a separate playlist, I have predicted what their best 22 might be in three years from now. So if you want to binge a bit of Western Bulldogs content, you can find it as two different playlists on this channel. So the third series starts today. Before I get into it, however, I do want to shout out three new members here on the True Footy YouTube channel. If you're unaware, I recently launched memberships here on the channel. If you want to find out more, you can hit the join button uh, below this video. Basically, it's a way to support the channel whilst getting uh, some perks like early access to videos and priority replies to comments and things like that. Uh, so I want to shout out the three new members we have on the channel. Real Swift, I'm probably not saying that right, Real Swift, Rogue Riot, and Kane Holland. So thank you very much for your support. It's very much appreciated. Cool, so let's talk about the doggies in 2024. So it's, I've kind of picked these out in random order. So we're just gonna work our way through them. The first one, as a New Year's resolution, it will be to find a way to replace Bailey Smith, who has obviously done his uh, ACL, which is really, really unfortunate for a number of reasons for the Western Bulldogs. Uh, now, so obviously this, this is an intriguing one, and I do wonder... I wouldn't go as far as to say blessing in disguise, but I do think you know th there's a chance that the Bulldogs find a way to maybe better optimize the midfield pieces that they have because not to blow it out of proportion entirely, but we know that the uh, Bailey Smith in particular was one player that was sort of pushed outside of the midfield rotation at times on a wing and a half forward, and it wasn't really conducive to him playing his best football. So I'm not going to try and frame it as a positive that he's done his ACL because that really sucks, but maybe there's a way that they can find maybe a more traditional wingman to find his way into this side. And there will be some other silver linings, you know, like a Riley Sanders finding his way into the team. But uh, if we're talking about more, you know, classic wingman who could sort of play that role. One of the options is someone like a Caleb Poulter. He was a mid-season draftee for them uh, last year and had a pretty positive start to his time at the Western Bulldogs. Obviously, I think he's been granted a two-year extension as well, which is, you know, uh, evidence of the fact that he made an impact when he came into the team. I think he played nine games in the first year, averaged 15 touches, had about three tackles a game. So positively speaking, they may have replacements for him within the side. I know that Poulter was already in the team, but in terms of filling that role, he's one option. Uh, the other one is James Harms, who they've just recruited and this is another uh, probably it's probably one of those things where it's quite good now that they've got James Harms it didn't make immediate sense on paper as to why they'd recruit another sort of midfielder forward uh, but nonetheless him coming to the side now might be positive especially if he can play a bit of time on a half forward flank which I think I identified in my 2024 series as an area where it wasn't really easy to pick which players were going to start on a flank. So Harms obviously comes to the Western Bulldogs from playing 152 games at Melbourne. Was a little bit disappointing last year. Only played the nine games, obviously found himself outside of the team, which ultimately led to him being available. But just the 12 touches a game. But if they can find a way to utilize his talents and, and for him to play a role for this Western Bulldogs side, that would be a way to bridge in the gap between where they are with, with Bailey Smith and what they are without him. So... To summarize, they need to find a replacement for Bailey Smith who can sort of bridge the gap in output. Another resolution is possibly just balancing the forward line uh, and, and working out exactly what that looks like, particularly from a balance of talls to smalls point of view. So we know that Aaron Norton is a is a gun, as is Jamara Yugel Hagen. So those guys are locks in their team, but we do know that the Bulldogs kind of now have this almost an oversupply of tall forwards, having recruited Rory Lobb only last year with moderate success. He wasn't horrible. He didn't really... Uh, well, he certainly didn't play as well as he did in his last year at Fremantle, that's for sure. So I suppose just finding out what's the optimal mix of tolls. You'd imagine that Norton and Hugo Hagen will be locks in this team. Uh, Lobb's spot might be up for grabs a little bit, and the biggest uh, candidate to take that role is probably a Sam Darcy. So this is where Sam Darcy versus Roy Lobb might be an interesting development this year. Again, I'm not too sure whether there's intentions to play Darcy as a key back or as a key forward this year. I did try and do my research on this topic. There's nothing concrete, so I don't know where he's training in the preseason, but I'm going to assume potentially he's available as a forward. Finding a way to integrate him into the side would be ideal, uh, and just balancing that those quality tools that they do have. And you have to consider Jordan Croft as well, but what I will say is Jordan Croft's probably a year or two at least from, um, from being a regular starter at AFL level. 
from a non-tall point of view, um, finding you know someone like a pressure forward like Charlie Clark to come into the side is something I would like to see this year. He was a prospect I liked in his draft year, yet to debut. And I think if he comes in as a pressure forward, he can combine with Waitman. And I do think the, the mix of that forward line uh, becomes quite diverse and dangerous. The third resolution is, again, these are in no real logical order, uh, but probably just to capitalize on the midfield dominance that the Western Bulldogs have. So we know it is a star-studded team, and even if you just look at 2023 performance uh, performances, Tim English, Bontempelli, and Liberatore all had great years. And Bont is probably the best player in the game, in my opinion. Tim English is the best ruckman in the game on exposed form right now. Uh, Liberatore is obviously a gun clearance player. Then you add in some players who are, you know, big names. Jack McRae, Bailey Smith, Adam Trelaw, who probably obviously didn't have the same impact as they had previously in their career. But as far as star-studded potential goes, uh, this team absolutely has it. And it did work well last year in terms of clearances. So it was the second-ranked clearances side. However, that didn't really translate to results, obviously. They missed the finals. Uh, they were sixth for inside 50, so there's a little bit of a disparity there. They were ninth in the league for points scored. I think ninth is where they finished on the ladder, so that makes sense. So it's just a, it's about converting that midfield dominance that they have, not just on the inside with clearances, but uh, you know more outside players like, well, Bont is not outside as such, but he's got an outside game. Same thing with Trelaw, McRae. These guys can hurt you. Again, I don't know if the midfield depth at the Western Bulldogs has been so deep that it's kind of been a blessing and a curse to some extent. Like we said, Bailey Smith uh, was pushed aside into different roles at times, as was Jack McRae, probably underutilized in the midfield, some would say. Uh, I believe Adam Trelaw even played a little bit at halfback. So uh, maybe there's a silver lining to having Smith unavailable uh, that they can optimize the talents that they do have a little bit better. But long story short, the, the main point being is the midfield dominance that they already have, even with the t some of those players not at their full potential, they're winning the ball. It's just about turning that dominance into scoring opportunities. Another resolution is probably just having a look at their key back situation. And uh, I don't mean to frame it as though the Western Bulldogs have a dire key back situation. You know, Liam Jones is a good player. Alex Keith has been. I know some people have lost faith in Alex Keith. And I've talked a lot about James O'Donnell this offseason. He made it a feature in my Young Guns of the Competition video that I did a few weeks back. Uh, but James O'Donnell is a key back. There's someone that unearthed last year. Uh, great story how he got into the league and looks like a long-term AFL player. So, you know, those stocks are not dire, but I suppose when you consider that Alex Keith is going to be 32 in January, Liam Jones will be 33 in February, uh, then there's probably just Ryan Gardner finding a more long-term solution, or perhaps I'll rephrase it this way, getting some real confidence as to what the next iteration of this backline looks like. Is it Ryan Gardner, James O'Donnell, and Jed Buzzlinger? Perhaps, and that's actually not a bad trio, to be honest, but we have to think about a future here where uh, Keith and Jones won't be around that much longer. So I think James O'Donnell is going to be a gun. Ryan Gardner has been serviceable, I think. Um, then there's also Jed Buzzlinger, who was a highly rated first rounder, and I think has a lot of upside. And as far as I can tell, from what I can research, he had a pretty good year, a first year in the VFL developing. So this Western Bulldog side ranked 15th in the league for intercepts last year, so their ability to cut off... Um, opposition entries into the forward line is a relative weakness. I guess long story short, what I'm saying is if James O'Donnell can continue his improvement as a good AFL young prospect, and we see a bit of Jed Buzzling apply his trade at AFL level, who I think has has weapons as a defender who can use the ball well and hurt teams um, with his defensive rebounds. If we get a taste of that and we can see what a future looks like there, I think that's a good outcome for this year. The next one, this one's a little bit more broad, but I just think get that top four finish. Um, it's been a long wait. I think it was 2010 since the last time the Western Bulldogs actually made the top four. They've won a premiership since then. They've played in another losing grand final. Uh, but nonetheless, it's still a top four drought, which is crazy considering the talent the Western Bulldogs have had on their list since about 2015, I would say. Um, since then, they've been a, a, a formidable side. And we've seen that team evolve, and yet it's still been a good team pretty consistently. I say consistently, I mean their performance hasn't been consistent, but the, the talent has been consistent. And I do feel like the Western Bulldogs, they've got this uh, influx of you know young quality players, partially through their academy, partially through good drafting. There's a number of father-sons in there as well. But for whatever reason, they've got good young prospects in there on their list and some very good aging veterans as well. And I just think for them, I'm sure the mindset's got to be, while Bontempelli's on the list, that's when we need this premiership window to be alive. As far as I'm concerned, when you've got a generational player like Marcus Bontempelli trying to strike when the iron is hot, uh, the time is now. So long story short, they probably need, it's about time for them to get that top four finish. And I think that's got, absolutely got to be the goal this year. You also factor in, it is the sixth oldest list. It is also the sixth most experienced list. And is the equal second most players on their list who have played a hundred plus games. 
Over the next three years in my uh, uh, best 22 and three year series, I estimated there's going to be about nine retirements over the next three years as well. So long story short, Western Bulldogs have probably underachieved from a home and away uh, perspective, the home and away performance. Obviously, they won a premiership, so I wouldn't say they've totally underachieved. If they can put themselves in a good position going into September, we know how good a final side they are when they click. So I think for them, the resolution is this year we've got to make the top four. Another resolution is probably just trying to get some value out of the traded in role players that they've acquired. So this is kind of a, a, an interesting trend here with the Western Bulldogs. They've they've had some good success with it to some extent. I mean, Jurea is an example of a player they got from another club and he's performed well for them. Uh, Oscar Baker, I think, has shown some good signs. Caleb Poulter, as I already talked about in this video. This year, they've added Caulfield and Harm. So it's an interesting strategy that they've got going on uh, that's had some relative success. But I think if they can get value out of Caulfield, in particular harms. Caulfield on the one hand, uh, he did his ACL in 2022 in the preseason and then had a recurring calf injury uh, that he only got over late in uh, later in this year. So he's had some injury woes, but a former top seven pick or top six pick even, dare I say it, has the potential. Can they be a little bit more patient with him? Sure, but I think harms probably in a more immediate sense with Bailey Smith's injury will prove to be a potentially important player. Another one is actually Lockie Bramble, who they picked up as a SSP player, I think, not a delisted free agent. Forgive me, I don't forget the exact specifics of it, but potentially as a small defender, potentially as a wingman, I'm not too sure. But they've had a crack at some low-cost potentially decent value prospects here. And Caulfield, you'd say, has uh, you know potentially a fairly high ceiling if he can get his body right, fingers crossed. So that'll be a resolution for them this year, get some value out of the players that they've picked up for cents on the dollar. The next one is a quick and easy one. I'd say successfully integrate Riley Sanders, who won the Lark medal and went uh, pick six in this year's draft to the Western Bulldogs, of course. I believe he came second in the time trial. So that is actually a really, really good start to his career. And look, why is it a resolution? They don't necessarily need him, but I just think he's already made player and he's good enough to impact the AFL level um, to begin with. I believe he played pretty well in a, as a primary on baller against the two uh, VFL and Sandville sides. I think it was Carlton and Port Adelaide. So he's shown he can sort of mix it with grown men. I think it would be a really positive sign in the medium term if they can get some games into Riley Sanders and it doesn't take too much away from their performance this year. I do think he's an outside chance for the rising star. Uh, but again, I think as a, as a genuine on-baller, it's, it's harder for him to win it than, say, some of the more outside types. But anyway, long story short, if we can see Riley Sanders uh, find his way into this team and, and establish a role for himself, I think that would be very positive. And finally, uh, probably just retaining the out-of-contract guns. And I say that as though it was almost an afterthought, but I think this is arguably one of the most important points. So they've got three out-of-contract stars on their list, or potential stars. So Bailey Smith... We talked about him a little bit already. Uh, him doing his ACL is just really unfortunate from a personal sense. Um, you know, he's potentially, it's going to impact his contract wherever he goes, if he stays or whether he goes, I mean. Also from the Western Bulldogs, not only did they lose a best 22 player, but, you know, they would probably have liked to use this year to prove to Bailey Smith that, um, you know, he's going to get the midfield rotations that he wants. So him leaving, apparently, to, according to John Ralph, I'm just passing on what other people said, he was an 80% chance of moving um, with respect to 2024. So I don't know what to make of that. There's a lot, a lot of water to go under the bridge, but trying to keep him will be an important focus. Tim English is another one. A little bit of a WA connection for sure. I believe that's mitigated a little bit by the fact that his, his partner uh, was playing with the West Coast Fever in the netball competition. It doesn't anymore, so I don't know how likely that is. I think the Bulldogs are fairly uh, confident of keeping Tim English. And the same thing with Jamara Yugel Hagen. Out of contract, gun player. Uh, he does want to stay at the club, although I don't know if the Aaron Norton contract might have made him raise his eyebrows. I doubt it. Didn't want to get too deep into this particular point, other than to say that the, the contracts of Smith, English, and Jamara are important to them. And I do think that we need to brace for the possibility we might see Bailey Smith in different colors in 2025. Uh, but then, you know, if they can keep Jamara and Tim English, that wouldn't be a disastrous result. But I do think losing two out of those three players would. So I would just say the resolution would be focusing as hard as they can on retaining these out-of-contract guns. All right, guys, that is my take on the Western Bulldogs and their resolutions for 2024. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. Of course, I'm going to naturally work my way through all of the different AFL clubs as we move through January, and uh, then I'll come up with my next 18 team series. But I hope you're enjoying the content. Let me know in the comments what you think. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.